Have you ever dreamt of owning your own five-star hotel? Well, you're going to in this problem. So if you own a five-star hotel and one day the San Jose Sharks team comes to you and asks if you could accommodate all of their guests for a week, what would you do? How would you go about determining if your hotel is big enough to accommodate all the guests for the San Jose Sharks? More formally, you're given a set of check-in and check-out times, such as guest one checks in on day two and checks out on day five. And you're required to calculate the minimum number of rooms required. In this example, for example, you assign guest one to this room. Guest two comes and on day one to three, there's clearly a conflict. So you assign room two to guest three. For this guest, by the time he comes, guest two has already checked out, so you could assign the same room. And uh, clearly, you just need two rooms to accommodate these three guests. So two is the minimum number of rooms you need to accommodate the three guests. So how would we go about developing an algorithm to determine the minimum number of rooms required? One obvious approach is to look at the minimum number of rooms required for every single day from day one to day k, day seven in this case, and the maximum of the minimum number of rooms required from day one to day seven is your answer. For example, guest one comes from day two to day five. So clearly we need at least one room from day two to day five. Now, look at the second guest. Guest two checks in on day one and checks out on day three. But for day two and day three, we know that we are already having one room. We already have one room occupied. So we need at least one other room on day two and day three. So we are just going to increment the array from day one to day three. Likewise, for the third guest, increment the array from day four to day seven. So now these are the minimum rooms required for each day from day one to day seven. If you scan through this array, you see that the maximum number of rooms required on any day is two. So overall, you could accommodate all the guests from day one to day k with just two rooms. Like any other solution, we now look at the memory complexity and the time complexity. Let's start with memory complexity. We have k days from day one to day seven. And we have an array of size k, so the memory complexity is clearly O of k. What about the time complexity? For time complexity, always think of the worst case scenario. In this case, what would be the worst case scenario? I would say each guest, each of the n guests stays for all the k days from day one to day k. So what do we end up doing for each guest? We end up incrementing this array this entire array we increment we end up incrementing each cell of this k sized array so the time complexity would be we have n guests so we multiplied by n and for each guest we increment each cell of the size k array which would be o of k so our total time complexity is o of n into k let's look at another problem what would be the minimum number of rooms required here? It's probably not that obvious. So I think but I think it's pretty intuitive that sorting this could give some clarity. So I sort it based on check-in time. And if check-in time is the same, I sort it based on checkout time. And this is what I have. Now for a minute, try to think 
not just the minimum number of rooms required, but how did you actually get to the answer? How did you brainstorm? How did you, how did you guess the answer? Or rather, how did you calculate the answer? I think uh, the answer as such is pretty obvious. But what what I guess most of you would have done to calculate the answer is you were probably scanning this and each time somebody checks in, you go like, oops, one room required here and you go about here and here somebody is checking out or rather here someone is checking in and you go like, okay, we need three rooms here and then somebody checks out, we just need two rooms. Somebody else checks out, we just need one room, you continue scanning. Somebody checks in, you need two rooms. Somebody checks out, you just need one room. And then somebody checks out and you just, you don't need any more rooms. So to summarize, you are basically just scanning from left to right and each time somebody checked in, you incremented your count. Each time somebody checked out, you decremented your count and you kept track of the maximum number of rooms required, which was at this point when these two guests checked in, you had, you required three rooms. So how, is there a way we could implement this solution? We could use this intuition as an algorithm with better time and our memory complexity. Let's try. Let's try to come up with a similar way of incrementing your account when somebody checks in and decrementing your account when somebody checks out without actually having an O of K sized array. So, I'm sorry. What I have here is the check in times and the checkout times. The check-in times are all in blue circles, the checkout times are in red circles, and they are all sorted. So let's start looking at, at this array from left to right. First, guest one checked in, so we need at least one room. That's pretty much our point here when guest one checks in and then guess two checks in we need two rooms so we are looking at this point here another guest checks in on the same day we are looking at this point here Our, so at this point we need three rooms and then one guest checks out we are looking at this point here so we just need two rooms another guest checks out we just need one room. Another guest checks in, increment the count. We are looking at this point and we are like, okay, we need two rooms. Another guest checks out, decrement the count. We just need one room. We looked at this point here. Our nth guest checks out and all our rooms are vacant. This was this point. So by just scanning through this array and keeping track of the maximum number of rooms required, we realized that at this point, at this point, we needed three rooms. So the minimum number of rooms required to accommodate all these guests is just three. And also we did not really have a O of K sized array. Let's take a look at the time and the memory complexity for this solution and see if we have actually done better than the previous solution. So we have an array, a sorted array of size what? 2n because we have the arrival time and the departure time for each guest and we had n guests. So we have an, we have an array of size 2n. So this is roughly O of n memory complexity. What about the time complexity? We sorted this array of size 2n and then we traversed this array from left to right, keeping track of the number of rooms required. So sorting an array of size 2n or rather n would be n 
log n and then we scan through this array keeping track of the number of rooms so that was o of n so together this is roughly big o of n log n plus n is just n log n so this is roughly big o of n log n this is our overall time complexity so we essentially managed to eliminate the k factor we don't really care about over how many days are these guests spread we just care about the number of guests and our time complexity is n log n as opposed to n into k which i think is much better